Can you state your name for the record? Uh, Charles Coppinger. Mr. Coppinger, how are you currently employed? Uh, I'm employed as a physician assistant at uh, Children's Healthcare of Atlanta Orthopedics. Okay. And uh, what do you do as a physician assistant um, at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta? Um, I uh, diagnose and, and treat patients um, under supervision of a phys physician, not direct supervision. Um, they review our charts. Um, I mostly see um, acute injuries. Okay. And what, what do you mean by acute injuries? Um, fractures, sprains, strains, um, any kind of uh, um, trauma kind of stuff. So you said that you are currently with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Um, how long have you been with, uh, how long have you officially been under the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta umbrella? Oh, since De they, I uh, was previously with Children's Orthopedics of Atlanta and they bought out our practice in December of last year. So in um, October of 2015, who technically was your employer at that point? Uh, Children's Orthopedics of Atlanta. Were you officially uh, under the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta umbrella at that point? No, sir. Um, and your background, have you primarily worked in the orthopedics field? Yes, yes, for um, basically um, for 17 to 18 years I've been in, in orthopedics and, and 15 to 16 of that uh, exclusive, exclusively with uh, pediatrics. Okay. Um, did you ever have an occasion to treat uh, Layla Daniel? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you recall the date uh, that you first treated Layla Daniel? Uh, that was um, on October 23rd of 2015. Your Honor, at this time I'd move into Evidence States Exhibit 187, which is the uh, medical records from Children's Orthopedics of Atlanta. Uh, it does have an attached uh, t uh, affidavit of certification of records. So if you ever need to look at the records, because it's, it's not a memory test. So if you need to look at these, just, just let us know, OK? Um, you said that she came in um, on October 23rd, 2019, correct? Yes. yes. Um, what, what was your knowledge at the time of any prior, um, of any prior visits that she may have, may have had with other providers? Um, the uh, only visit that I was aware of at the time was um, a uh, visit with the uh, Ur Children's Healthcare Urgent Care at Hudson Bridge. Um, were you aware of a visit with the Dr. Duxbury? Uh, no, sir. The um, what was the purpose of Layla visiting you that day? Um, she had a uh, leg injury um, on her right leg, which turned out to be a fracture. Um, and do you recall how she came uh, into your office that particular day? As far as did she have any medical medical uh, medical devices on her body that, at that time? Oh yes, yes. She um, she came in. She had been seen at the urgent care, and they had, had placed her in a splint, which is sort of um, almost like half of a cast. Which is um, it's a fiberglass that goes down the back of the leg, and then it's wrapped on with like an ace wrap, an ace bandage. Now, do you recall who she was brought in by? Um, it was her mother, um, according to my notes. Um, I, I can't recall, if, uh, like I said, if it was foster mother. I didn't, that, that part is not in my notes, whether it was foster or not. So. Okay. Well, she was brought, so she was, well, she was brought in by someone identifying as her mother? Yes. All right. Um, and did you get a history from uh, this person regarding how uh, Layla hurt her leg. Yes. And what was the history that you received? The uh, history was that she was um, at a gymnastics facility um, and a sibling had a class there. She wasn't there for a class and she went out was playing and, and climbed on a, uh, on a balance beam and had fell off the balance beam. Okay. Um, did, was there anything mentioned about being on bars? No, sir. Was there anything mentioned about doing a pike? No. Um, did she indicate what happened on the balance beam? Uh, just, just that she climbed on it and that she fell off of it. Did she provide you with the date of this, uh, of this injury? Uh, yes, it was the, um, 
it was 10, uh, October 18th of 2015. And that would have allegedly, or that would have been the day before she went to um, uh, the urgent care center, is that correct? Yes. Um, did at any point she mention anything about falling in, a gra in the grandmother's yard? Uh, no, sir. When you, um, when you, did you see the x-rays? Yes, sir. All right. And uh, was there a fracture there? Yes, there was a uh, fracture in her proximal tibia, which is the upper end of the bone in the lower leg. Okay. At that time, did you, based upon the history that you had, did you have any concerns at that particular time? Uh, no, no, I did not. Okay. What did you do um, as a result of um, having this particular fracture? Um, we, uh, at the time, we, we placed her in a cast, um, uh, which uh, comes up uh, above her knee to about mid-thigh and down to her foot. Now, do you do an examination? Yes, sir. What do you examine? And so, typically, um, with my practice being acute injuries, our, our uh, exam is, is pretty focused. And so, um, uh, typically, it's um, mainly... fracture. Uh, if, if they come in, in in shorts, then a lot of times we can just leave them in the shorts that they're in. If it's in one of the cooler months and, um, and they're in pants, then we provide them with, uh, we have uh, some uh, paper type shorts that we put them in. Um, did you have, um, uh, did, the, from the examination, did you note any, any bruising that wasn't associated with the fracture? Um, not anything out of the ordinary. It's, Did you note any bruising with, that, that was associated with the fracture? fracture? Um, yes, there, there, was, there was some uh, uh, mild bruising around, around the fracture site. Is that um, typical for this type of fracture? Yes, yes, that's very typical. And typically the bruising is, is more um, when, when they have a fracture, the, the bone uh, bleeds underneath the skin and that will come to the surface. And so um, typically you'll see that within three or four days after they have a fracture. Okay. Now you mentioned that you did not, uh, you were not aware of her going to any other, to another orthopedic doctor, correct? That is correct. Um, if you had known that, would that have uh, caused any concern for you? Yes, de definitely so, as to why, why they were coming to a second <laughs> provider. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yes, uh, uh, that would concern me as to why they were not treated by that provider and are coming to a second provider. So there would have been definitely more questions asked at that point. If um, they were referred to Children's Health Care of Atlanta, would that have concern to go to the Eggleston campus? Would that have concerned you as well? Yes. And why is that? Um, it, because typically, um, if um, any time that, that I myself send someone, uh, refer them to, to the Eggleston campus or our Scottish Rite campus, which is the main two hospitals that we uh, refer to. It's, it's typically for um, either uh, some type of surgical intervention um, or there's a, a suspicion of non-accidental trauma. Now, what did you do? I think you said that you did some casting on the leg, correct? Can you yes. describe to us how, um, where you put the cast on the leg? Okay, so the, uh, uh, the cast basically runs from her uh, mid-thigh um, down and out to the toes. Showing you stage 157. Is that the, uh, I don't think we need them off. Is that the cast, I, I, is that, the cast that you uh, put on Layla? Yes, yes, sir. So how high up on the thigh, and I can't quite see it quite well on that one, how high up on the thigh does it go? Yeah, if you can stand know, for us. Yeah, thigh, maybe three quarters away up the thigh. There's a little bit of leeway. If you could stand for us and just kind of indicate on your, on yourself. So, so typically it will, it will go anywhere from mid thigh to here, you know, just, just enough to give you enough room where it doesn't, doesn't rub there okay. too high. Now, um, is there ever any bruising or, or chafing that uh, people might get from having a cast on? Um, there could be some, uh, maybe a little mild chafing, not, not bruising though, not typically. 
Now, um, is that the only time that you saw Layla Daniel? No, sir. And when was the second time that you saw her? The second time was a week later, um, which was uh, on, on uh, 1030. And what was the purpose of that exam? Uh, that, that was a, uh, a follow-up visit for the fracture. Typically, um, with a fracture, if, if it is um, what we term a complete fracture, which means it goes all the way through the bone, those have uh, potential to shift around uh, even in a cast. And so um, the, uh, we see them back in a week to make sure that they're staying lined up and not shifting and make sure they're healing properly. How long is this? Um, how long is this uh, exam normally? How long does it normally take? Uh, the, that visit is usually uh, very quick. Um, basically, we take a quick look at the cast, make sure everything looks like it's fitting well, um, and we shoot a quick x-ray, and, and that's basically the extent of the, the second visit. Do you do any sort of examination on the rest of her body? No, no, sir. Um, was that the last time that you saw Layla Daniel? No. All right, when was <laughs> the last time you saw her? Uh, to get her cast off, and that was on uh, November 13th of 2015. And you said that that was the, uh, to get her cast off? Yes, sir. How extensive an, of an exam or visit is this, would this type of visit be? Um, it's um, somewhere between the other two. Uh, basically, um, you, you do an exam of that extremity, uh, typically I'll kind of, um, compare it with the with the other extremity to sh and show the parents because typically when they've been in a cast like that they'll have some some muscle atrophy from not using uh that leg and so usually i'll kind of compare and show this to show the, the parents hey look this leg's going to be weaker and they'll have a little bit of a limp for a little while afterwards okay do you recall who brought her in um uh, her mother again uh at that time and uh, i believe there was a gentleman with her too at that time um, I'm not sure if it was if it was father. I'm not sure. Okay, to be honest. Um, so the uh, the clothing. Do you recall the clothing that she was in? Um, she had on uh, the uh, and I think the the first visit it was uh, was the one that I recall that she had on um, a uh, it was sort of a Halloween type of themed outfit that had kind of some flared little. Uh, legs at the bottom of it. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it, it had flared legs. And, I'll and show you the fences exhibit 10. And is this what you observed her wearing or not? Yes, yes. And was that? Um, that was it. That was on the last day? That was, I can't remember if it was the first one or the last one, but I, I, I remember the outfit. Like, to be honest, I can't 100% say and Judge, was, I would just note for the record that uh, the stipulated date is November 14th of 2015. And that was the same day that she came in to see you, correct? The 13th. Was oh, I'm sorry. Yes. The 13th. 13th. My bad. Yes. The, um, tell me about the, um, did you notice anything at that exam that seemed out of the ordinary to you? No, sir. And again, what parts of the body did you did you examine or look at on this type of uh, this type of visit? Mainly the the affected uh, leg, the other leg. Like I said, for comparison purposes. Um, but um, you know, and if that the the rest of the body, we don't really really examine at that point. So. Okay. And the did you notice anything when you took off the uh, cast that seemed unusual? Uh, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. I want to show you what's been previously admitted to State's Exhibit 54. In this particular, do you recognize the area of the body that this would be? That is the, looks like the inner thigh. Okay. And is that the same leg that uh, the cast was on? It appears to be, yes. Um, now, was there any indication that the ca cast caused that injury? Uh, no. Would the cast have even I, gone up that high? I, I, no, the cast was, first of all, the cast was up that high, and second of all, that I, I would have noted that, too, uh, if I saw that, because that would be unusual to see that. I want to show you the state's exhibit 56, which is the, the flip side, um, looking at that same injury. Um, again, is there any indication that the cast caused that injury? No, sir. 
Did you see anything even I, remotely I, I, appearing like that when you took the cast off? No. Right. Would the cast have even been that high? It, it should not have been one, no. And I'll show you what's been admitted as State's Exhibit 57. Did you see any of those bruises um, on Layla uh, when she visited you on the, um, for, uh, on the 13th? Not that I recall. So, um, in, in, not that I recall seeing any bruises there. So. Okay. And was that the, uh, the last time that you uh, examined Layla Daniel? Yes, sir. Okay. Nothing further at this time. Thank you, Cross. <clears throat> Mr. Coppinger, Dr. Coppinger? Uh, no, physician assistant. Physician assistant. Mr. Coppinger. Um, Mr. Coppinger, my name is Kareem Mall. I'm going to ask you a number of questions. I just ask that you let me know if I. You don't understand my question, or if I'm not speaking loud enough, if you'd let okay. me know. Mr. Coppinger, you saw Layla on uh, 10, the first time you saw her was on which date? The, on uh, October 23rd. On October 23rd? Yes. And um, you had been told that symptoms had begun on what date? On the... Uh, October 18th. Now, were they told, given you a date, or were they just told you several days before? They they would have given me a date. Okay. You know, that's um, one thing. Uh, if you talk to my staff at the office, that's one thing I'm very particular about. Is I want a date of injury on there because sometimes when they're, when they're bringing patients back and doing that and putting the stuff in, they'll uh, some people tend to want to put last Tuesday or, or something like that, and I'm, I'm very particular. I talk to them all the time. I want I want the date. I want the date on the chart of the date of injury. And um, you noted that she was well nourished and in no distress, correct? Yes, correct. And how did she come to you? Did she walk, or did she was she carried? In? Uh, at that point, she was carried. She was carried in, and. Um, you said that she had full range of motion, correct? Full ROM. Yes, yes. And you noted that she had no tenderness. Um, not on, on the, uh, I, I would have noted that she had tenderness. Yes, she did have tenderness. She, she did right. have tenderness or she had no tenderness? Yeah, no, she had tenderness on the right lower extremity. The left lower extremity, my note says that uh, had no tenderness, but the right lower extremity did have tenderness. And um, lesions, abrasions, bruises, or lacerations, what did you say? Um, not, nothing, nothing that was out of the ordinary. Um, you know, uh, with kids, the, you know, the, the majority of kids that come, come in will have a bruise here or there. Um, that's not uncommon, um, but nothing was noted that was out of the ordinary. Is this type of bruising what you would call out of the ordinary? Um, that, that could be considered ordinary, depending on the kid. And you wrote down that what the x-rays showed you was a minimally impacted uh, proximal tibia fracture. Yes. Correct? What does minimally impacted mean? Means uh, basically when we say impacted, kind of crushed down just a little bit. Okay. okay. So, um, wouldn't require a great deal of force. Um, sort of a, a, a medium amount of force, I would say. Okay. So. Sufficient force that a two-year-old could exert when falling. If if they fell from a little bit little bit of a height, yes. The the most common way we see these is is trampolines, which have force coming up, and that's in the in, in this age group. That's the most common thing that we see is from from a trampoline. The force of the trampoline usually there's an older kid and a younger kid and the trampoline's coming up and the kid is coming down that's just the most common by far the most common way we see these probably 90 percent of them are so but gymnastics did not seem to be out of the ordinary community. no if, if she was on a uh, uh a balance beam and, and fell off um that that uh, seemed and plausible where where in your notes did you say that there was a balance beam um 
So, so with, with, with my notes, I did state specifically that there was a balance beam. And in my notes, it said um, that, that there was, uh, that, it, that it was a sports injury, and that's basically from, from, from memory that it was a balance beam. I don't think. But could you be mistaken? Could it have been some other type of fall from gymnastics? Um, I specifically remember her saying, mom saying she climbed on the balance beam and fell off. And that it wasn't, she wasn't taking a class, that it was a sibling that, that was taking a class and she was just there and she went over and climbed up and on the beam and fell off. And when you saw her, she was in a diaper and a pull-up, right? Um, I, I believe that she probably had a pull-up on. I can't say 100% certain. There. And you didn't see any cuts or lacerations or no. bruising no. anywhere? No, not anything out of the ordinary. And you didn't see any evidence that she was favoring her arm or holding her arm as if it hurt? No, ma'am. Uh, you didn't notice anything having to do with her arm as being painful or tender? No, with, with my exam, I didn't notice her, her not using it or, or any kind of deformity or anything like that. I didn't do a specific exam on the arm, but, but I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary with the arm at the time. And she didn't hold it up to you and say it hurts or anything? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, you said she appeared well nourished and without distress, correct? Yes, that is correct. Now, what did you um, what did you put her in when you said you put her in a cast? It uh, basically a cast is. Um, uh, it, it's it's made of fiberglass. It's it's wrapped on there underneath. There is uh, cotton padding underneath there, and, and initially you put on a cotton what we call a stockinette, which is kind of um, like a long sock that, that goes underneath there, and then you wrap cotton padding, and then you wrap the fiberglass as it's wet, and then as it dries, it hardens. And did you put her in a boot? Um, the uh, she she would have been given a a what we term a cast shoe, which is just a, a um, little thing that straps over the bottom of the cast so she can uh, put weight on it. Um, and tell me if you would, um, did you give her any type, is it typical with children that sometimes you give them a piece of the stockinette or a piece of the, wad, the, the cotton? Uh, Yes, yeah, so sometimes that, sometimes we do. Yeah. You, sometimes they'll be in there and they'll kind of play with it, and we'll we'll let them let them have that. Yes. And um, do you recall doing that for Layla? I don't. I don't recall specifically. No. But it would not surprise you. No, it would not. Call putting, um, well, let me ask you this. Why did you put a full cast? Would it have been appropriate to have left her in a splint? Um, not, not typically. The, the, re the reason being is um, the, the splints um, don't support the fracture as well. Um, with the splint, they're not able to get up and, and weight bear on that splint, and it's really hard to keep a, uh, a young child off of it to start with, so they need the extra protection of a cast. And also a splint can loosen more over time and, and can cause some, some problems, especially with the, uh, with the heel area of, of getting pressure sores with the younger kids. So leaving her for a week in a cast or a day in a, uh, leaving her for a day or a week in a splint would not have been proper treatment would no no but for a short term uh, it is for long term it's not for for short term um, the reason that that they initially uh, splint them as opposed to casting them is 
uh, well, there's a couple of reasons. One is so when they come to see us, we can get a good exam of our own. Um, and then um, num num number two is uh, for the first uh, two or three days, the fractures tend to swell, okay? And if you put a cast on immediately, the, the, the cast can get too tight. Whereas a splint, um, because the, the front of it is just an ace bandage that gives, and so it, um, that's the reason we use the splint. Usually, uh, typically, depending on the fracture, um, anywhere from uh, one, one day to, to some fractures, we leave them in a splint for as much as a week or more, okay? If, it, if it's a really bad fracture that we're really concerned with the swell. That was not the case in this so, situation, was so, it? No, no, this. And did you give her a um, cast shoe? Yes. Yes, we would have given her a cast shoe. Um, did you give her a uh, walker boot or a uh, cam walker? Uh, no, ma'am. Did you do fiberglass casting? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 182. Tell me, if you would, which of those did you do for um, Layla Daniel? So. We would have done a, a fiberglass casting. This is, this is not um, anything from my office, though. I understand. I'm just asking you yeah, to look at the list. Fiberglass casting, and then um, I'm trying to see if there's a, I don't see a cast shoe on there. I just see the walker doing so I don't see the cast shoe on there. But typically, I think, and, and is that oh, there it is. Okay, shoe? Have it done. yes. Yes, so cast shoe, yes. Anything else on this list that you put on her? No, that would be Exhibit 122. And ask you if this is the cast that you put on Layla. Yes, ma'am. That is, that is the cast, and that is our, uh, appears to be one of our cast shoes also. So, so she was meant to walk on it? Yes, ma'am. In fact, the more the better? Um, typically, uh, we, the weight bearing, the act of, of weight bearing, um, uh, will, uh, stimulate it to heal a little faster. So the, the more she walks on it, the better it is for her. At this time, Your Honor, is that a yes? Yes, yes. At this time, I would tender number 122 into the record, Your Honor, and ask to publish. Show us the fiberglass casting. Um, the, this, the, the pink is the, is the fiberglass, and then the black is the, the stockinette that goes underneath it, and then between, the, between those two there is uh, cotton. And what's that's, on her wrist? Um, that's, is that not a piece of the stockinette? That, yes, it appears to be a piece of the stockinette. Thank you. Let me ask you this, um, can different providers use different materials? Uh, yes, to, to, to an extent. Okay. And you, you mentioned you don't know what, uh, that's not from your, from your office, correct? Yes. That's All right. right. 
Um, let me ask you this. Um, Ms. Moll asked you whether or not it is appropriate to leave a child in a splint uh, for, for several days, correct? Yes. Yes. All right. Well, would it have been appropriate to leave a child in a splint um, and send them to Children's Health Care of Atlanta for further evaluation and treatment? Yes, sir. Would it have been appropriate for the, for the person who is caring for them to ignore that medical advice? Uh, no, that would not be appropriate. Did Ms. Rosenbaum ever mention to you anything about, during these follow-up visits, anything about uh, Layla uh, having any issues falling in the cast? Not that I recall. Uh, you know, obviously any kid is going to be uh, with, with a cast on is going to be a little little more unsteady, um, but there was nothing that I recall. There okay, so nothing that was, nothing that stands exactly. out to you. Okay, nothing further, Judge. So it would not be unexpected that she might trip or Give way. Yes, yes, that that could could be very possible. And um, at your office, do you when you send somebody to Eggleston, do you give them a sheet of paper that says that you should go to Eggleston? This is the address. This is who you should ask for. Uh, typically, yes. Thank you. I have nothing further. Have a seat. My name is Carmen Scott, K A R M E N S C O T T. And Ms. Scott, how are you currently employed? I work for the Henry County Health Department. What do you do for the Henry County Health Department? I provide Children's First services for participants that are referred to the program. What is Children's First? Children's First is a referral and resource program. We see, we do family assessments and developmental screenings, and we refer the families to other services that they may need, like WIC services or Babies Can't Wait services, defects, pediatricians. We give them phone numbers and contact information. Are certain families required to have a child's first assessment? Um, the program is designed to be free and voluntary. However, defects strongly encourages their children that are in the foster system to be assessed. And how long have you been in the position you're in now? Uh, since 2015. When in 2015 did you start? September. Serve? Now, on October 28th of 2015, did you see Millie Place and Layla Daniel? Yes, I did. And how come you saw them on October 28th? 
Excuse me? How come you saw the children? Oh, they were referred through the DFACS system to be assessed for developmental screening. Who brought them? Uh, Jennifer Rosenbaum. When you do a screening, do you do a full body exam? No, no. The screenings are mostly socioeconomical screenings. It's uh, developmental. Uh, the, the parent or guardian fills out the paperwork ahead of time, and I just review it with them. Uh, it's all paper. We don't do any physical assessment at all. And is the paperwork they fill out, what is it called? Um, ages and Stages Questionnaire. It's, a, it's called ASQ. I use the ASQ3 version, uh, and uh, it's a standard screening. Pediatricians also use the same screenings when they do well checks. And is the screening different depending on, or is the questionnaire different depending on the child's age? Yes, it goes by age. It's two months, four months, six months, so forth, up until five years old, or 60 months. Now, with <clears throat> Millie's um, assessment, did you use the questionnaire with her? Yes. Okay. And did you use the 48-month-old questionnaire? Yes, if that was her age. It, it, it is regarding according to age so depending on her age at the time and you indicated that the paperwork is filled out by the child's guardian correct so in Mill Millie's case that would have been Jennifer Rosenbaum yes and how did Jennifer answer the question has your child had any medical problems in the last several months I'm not sure right this minute I'd have to look at the form okay. but looking at the questionnaire assist you in answering that question if you looked at Millie's question, oh. would that help you answer yes, the question? Yes, if I looked at the question, yes, because I don't remember word for word. Oh, okay, yes, so it says no. That is true. And how did Jennifer answer the question, do you have any concerns about your child's behavior? And uh, She answered no. And how did Jennifer answer the question, does anything about your child worry you? She noted that yes, she had a concern that she has a semi-attachment issue. Semi-attachment issues is how it's written. On Millie's questionnaire, was there any concern noted about lying? Mm, not according to this page. In Millie's questionnaire, was there any um, notation about a history of abuse regarding Millie? Not on this questionnaire. Okay. How did Millie act during the appointment? Well behaved, quiet. Is it your practice to take a photo of the child when they come in for an appointment? Yes, the cler clerks do that at the front desk when they're first uh, being processed. Um, they check their income, Medicaid, and they take a picture for their medical record. It's just a headshot through glass. Through glass, you said? Through the glass, yeah, through, the, through glass. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. I'm show you what I've marked as states exhibit 188 and see if you recognize it. Oh, yes, I do. And how do you recognize it? Um, well, that's Millie, because she had that purple bow. And is that how Millie appeared to you when you I saw her in October of 2015. Yes. This time I tender states exhibit 188 into evidence and ask for permission to publish. Admitted to me publish. Is it how Millie appeared at her appointment? Ms. Scott? Yes. Now I want to turn your attention to Layla's questionnaire. Would looking at her questionnaire help you in answering some of the questions? Yes, please. On Layla's questionnaire, how did Jennifer answer the question, has your child had any medical problems in the last several months? She answered that she had a fractured tibia shin bone from a fall at gymnastics. 
How did Jennifer answer the question, do you have any concerns about your child's behavior? When she gets angry, she has fits of rage. How did Jennifer answer the question, does anything about your child worry you? Yes, bio mother's meth use during pregnancy. Was there any mention of concern of a history of child abuse? No. Did Jennifer identify any other areas of concern with regards to Layla? No. How did Layla act during the appointment? She was very quiet. Um, she was being held because she still had a cast on her leg. So she was being <laughs> held through the entire visit. And did you also take, a, or someone at your office take a photo of Layla on that yes. date? Yes. May I approach the witness here? I'm going to show you what I've previously marked the state's exhibit 189 and see if you recognize that photograph. Yes. Okay. And is that a fair and accurate picture of how Layla appeared to you in October 28, 2015? Yes. And at this time, I tender state's exhibit 189 and to add evidence and ask for permission to publish. And you indicated that Layla was um, being held the, the entire time because she had a cast on? Yes. And who was holding her? Jennifer. Approximately how long was the appointment that you had? Maybe 20 to 30 minutes. And were services uh, recommended for either Layla or Millie? Um, well, the program itself, the assessment com is completed with the, uh, with the developmental screenings uh, and the monitoring was not, is not a requirement and so she opted out of that. When you say she, who is that? Um, Jennifer. Okay. That was no further questions, thank you. Trisha Blissett, T R I S H A B L I S S I T T. And Ms. Blissett, how are you employed? Uh, at Gym Tech for Kids. And how long have you been with Gym Tech? Nine years. And what are your duties um, as an employee with Gym Tech? I am the office manager. And what does that mean? What all do you have to do as the office manager? Um, I take care of all the um, customers as they come in, the parents and the kids. I, give them their trial classes, I give them their waivers, their parent information to fill out, I take their money, pretty much everything. <laughs> so all the back office stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you involved in teaching any of the classes or coaching any of the kids that attend Gym Tech? No. Okay. And I'm going to show you what's being marked in the state exhibit number 190. So you can see that there's Yes. And what is State's Exhibit 190? I'm sorry? What is State's Exhibit 190? This is, I had to sign it um, to say that all this information was correct and had not been tampered with or anything. And is all the information that you provided to our office um, part of that packet that I just handed you? Yes. Okay. Has there been any changes or deletions to any of that information? No. State would ask the State's Exhibit 190 be admitted into evidence. No and, thank you. And Ms. Blissett, when someone comes to um, Gym Tech, what happens if they are looking to join Gym Tech? Um, the first thing I do is give them a waiver for them to fill out because before a child can enter the floor, they have to fill out the waiver. And then if they decide that they're going to sign up, then I give them the parent information stuff where they fill all that out. So the parent information and the waiver, is there anything else that has to be filled out? Um, and at some point in 2015, did you come into contact with Jennifer Rosenbaum? Yes. And um, what occasion did you have to come into contact with her? Um, she came up and she asked me if she, if, um, she could do a trial class. If, um, and I said yes. I gave her the waiver. She took out, she went out to the gym, and um, I was sitting in there and I was like, I never got a waiver back. 
And so then I went out to the gym and I asked her where it was and she said that um, she wasn't sure if the little girl was gonna do the, um, Layla was gonna do the class or not. Let me back you up. Uh -huh. Was Ms. Rosenbaum, did she have a child participating at Gym Tech? Yes. Okay. Do you recall who that child was? Millie. And do you recall when she signed up? Um, like it's the end of September. Okay. And I'm gonna show you um, what's probably six packet number 191. What are you looking at? What, what, what form is this as part of that package? Oh, that is the student enrollment form. That's what I give them after they do their trial if they decide that they are good, definitely going to sign up. Okay. And what's the date on that um, form? Um, September 21st, 15. So would that have been the date that she did a trial class? Um, she could have done the trial class that day. Sometimes the parents will go ahead and fill them out and give them to me that day, and then sometimes they'll return them. But that's more than likely the day that she did the trial because okay. that was the first day that I believe that we have a payment from her. And what name was the child registered under? Millie Rosenbaum. Did you have any um, knowledge that um, of the name of Millie Place? No. And who fills out this form? The parent. Okay. And down at the bottom where it talks about emergency contact, what does that contain? What is that talking? Um, that's just like the person that you call if something were to happen to the child or if they didn't get picked up from class and you needed to call somebody or couldn't get in touch with the parent. And does it contain any other information in regards to insurance? Um, I don't believe that one does. The, I believe the other one does, maybe. Under the emergency contact portion. Okay. Oh yeah, like if we, if they get if we need to transport them, if they get hurt, yes. And according to this document, who was the insurance provided for Millie at that time? Um, Jennifer Rosamond. And under what insurance company? Um, Medicaid. And at that time, did Miss at that time after November, sorry, September the 21st, was Millie in fact enrolled at Gym Tech? Yes. And what classes was she taking at Gym Tech? She was taking one of our preschool classes. And do you know when those classes took place? Um, back then, I believe we had them on Mondays and maybe Tuesdays and Wednesdays. You said Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Would the child, if she was attending those classes, go to every one of those days? No, they come to one class once a week. And, and her you, day was on the Monday. And do you recall what time that class was? It was, I don't know, not exactly. Mm -mm. And I'm showing another part of States 190. And can you tell me what this is that we're looking at? That is the waiver form that they have to fill out before they can get on the floor. And was this form filled out? For Millie? Yes, for Millie. Yes. Okay. And what day was that filled out? September 21st, 2015. And for the classes, you indicated that you handled the billing as well. Correct. And how much it was, how much did it cost to attend these classes? $60 a month. And there was a $40 registration fee. And was payment made for Millie to attend Gym Tech? Yes. I'm showing you another part of state's exhibit number one. And what is um, in this um, form that we're looking at here? That's our statements that we have. And what child is this dealing with? Millie. And can you tell me when was the first charge made for the account? September 21st, 2015. And what was the charge for September the 21st of 2015? That $55 is the $40 registration fee 
and we had like one class left in September and so that's a charge of fifteen dollars and so then that was what that was for. And the and the second charge? The seven dollars was um, for a T shirt. And the next charge was when? September twenty eighth. That would have been like her October payment. And the charge after that? The fifth uh, November first. That was for tuition, sixty dollars. And the next one? The fifteen was for a leotard that they wear when they do gymnastics. And then the final one? That was um, December's tuition. Okay. And was that amount actually received for December the first? No. And why not, if you know? Uh, I don't know. They just didn't pay it. I guess she wasn't coming any longer. Okay. And you talked about the role. Are you in charge of keeping the role as well? The coaches keep. The coaches take the, keep the role. Mm -hmm. Coaches take the role. Are the is the role kept as part of your records for Gym Tech? Yes. And did you provide a copy of that, the role for Millie, the classes that she attended? Yes. Up, um, for this class? Yes. And what day is this on? Monday. And what time? 4 to 4.55. Okay. And who makes the indications or um, notations as to whether or not the child attends? The coaches. So any marks on this, would you have made it or would it have been the coach? The coach. That's the same class, just a new roll sheet. Now the top it says class. What does that mean? That's just the name of our classes, our preschool classes. And who was Millie's coach um, during the time that she was enrolled at Gym Tech? Um, Natalie um, Harrington. Now, was there a second child um, that was with Ms. Rosenbaum when she would attend Gym Tech? Yes. And who was that child? Layla. And at any time, was Layla enrolled in your cl in classes at Gym Tech? No. And did you check your paperwork in order to determine whether or not you had any registration paperwork for Layla yes. Daniel? Yes. And did you have any paperwork for Layla Daniel? No. At any point in time, did was there a discussion regarding Layla participating in the classes? Yes. Do you recall when that was? Um, like October 2015. And who did you have that discussion with? Jennifer. And can you tell me what happened during that discussion? Yeah, she asked if she could do a trial class, and so I said yes. And so I gave her, that's when I gave her the, um, the waiver and asked her to fill it out. And did she, in fact, fill that waiver out? No. What happened on that day um, in regards to Layla doing a trial class? Okay, when I gave her the waiver and I asked her to fill it out and then she didn't um, return it to me. So then I went out into the gym and asked her about it. She said she wasn't sure if she was gonna take the class because she had been complaining of a hurt leg. And so she wasn't sure if she was gonna take it. And I said, well, if she does the class and she goes on the floor, you have to give me that waiver, I have to have it. And so she said, okay. And then I just went back into the office. And did you ever get that waiver back from her? No. Um, do you recall what date that was? Not the exact date, no. If I show you a piece of paper, may that, would that help to refresh? Probably. Me? This is a final page of State's Exhibit number 90. Uh, October 19th. Okay. After, did you see the defendant, Jennifer Rosenbaum, after that class on the 19th? No. And um, was, did you ever discuss whether or not Layla had actually gone out and, do, and did the trial class with her? No. Okay. Did you at some point find out whether or not Layla had been on the mats at Gym Tech on that day? No. Um, when was the next time that you spoke with Ms. Rosenbaum? 
um, I believe maybe the following week or that. She asked me, I guess on the 19th, to, if I could fill out some paperwork to um, invoice her so that she could go to DFAS to see if they would pay if she decided to take classes. Okay. And did you, did you do an invoice for her? I did. Okay. I'm going to show you the final thing is exhibit number 190. Is that the invoice? Yes. Yeah. And can you just walk us through um, what all of this means on this invoice? Yeah, that would be the $40 registration, the last um, class for one class for December, uh, October, and then six months worth of classes. Mm -hmm. And I was get sent to send it to DFAX. Okay. Or she was going to pick it up and take it to Jim them. Did she ever pick it up? No. Um, did you ever send it to DFAX? No. Did Layla ever come in and begin to take classes in Gentech? No. Okay. Um, do you guys have um, what's called open play at yeah. Gentech? Yes. And what is that? That is just it's an open gym where they come in with their parent and they just kind of get to have free time in the gym, run around playing, and the parent is with them at all times. Okay. And when, um, in 2015, did you guys have open play? We had those on like Mondays and Thursday mornings. When you say morning, what time in the morning? 10.30 to 11.30. And when a parent wanted to come in and participate in open play, um, did they have to fill out anything? Yes. Everybody that comes in, whether it's a birthday party or anything, but any child that comes into the gym that is going to get on the floor has to sign the waiver. And did you, um, do, to your knowledge, did um, Millie Rosenbaum Place or Layla Daniel ever participate in open play at Gym Tech? No. Okay. And how, are you, how do you know that? I went back through all my waivers that, and I never saw their name on anything. Are you familiar if a child is ever injured at Gym Tech, what is the process and procedure of handling that um, we have, situation? We have an injury report and all of our coaches know that they have to fill that out and give it to the parent to sign and then we keep a copy of it in our pocket. Okay. And I'm showing you the final page with the Department of State's number, exhibit number 190. Is this the form that you're speaking of? Yes. And if the form of that nature was filled out for a child at Gym Tech, who would get that form and who would keep that form? They would give it to me and I would file it. Okay. And um, did you ever receive any reports of an um, accidental injury um, regarding um, Millie Rosenbaum Place or Layla Daniel? No. When, when the next time, when was after the October the 19th um, conversation with Ms. Rosenbaum, do you recall the next time you saw her? Um, that was probably around the beginning of November, like the second November, maybe. Okay. And um, did you have any conversation with her at that time? Yes. And that that was she bought a Leo, and I talked to her about the Leo. Did she find it? When she came on November the second, um, did you see Millie or Layla with her at that time? I saw Layla. The children usually just the parents will come see me, and the kids usually just run on back to their class. And when you saw Layla, what did you observe about her on November the 2nd? Um, she was holding her, and she had a, a pink cast on her leg. Did um, you inquire about um, how she ended up with the cast on? I did not, but our owner talked to her about it. At any point, did Ms. Rosenbaum indicate to you that Layla had been hurt while at Gym Tech? No. Nothing further at this time. Ma'am? Excuse me. Did you look up the forms under Layla Rosenbaum? I did both. And um, it's your testimony as you sit here today that that invoice was not given to Jennifer, correct? Was given to Jennifer, I mean. The invoice? Yes. I don't recall ever giving it to her. Um, but it's possible you did. Maybe, but I don't remember doing it. And there are 
little slides in your gym, are they not short slides on the ground? Mm -hmm. And it's fair to say that kids, kids that come and watch their siblings play may wander around and play on some of the, the uh, equipment. No, they were, if they're not in a class, they are not allowed on the floor. But sometimes they do that anyway, don't they? And parents no. go with them and so no. that's never not, happened. Not if they're not in a class, no. Never happened in your, in your entire if, life? If, it, if they walk out there, our coaches get them. They know that parents, that's, we're very strict about that. So Defendants Exhibit 1, 2, 123. Let's see if you can identify that. Mm -hmm. That is a coach with um, a student. And who's the student? Uh, is that, uh, that may be Layla. I didn't see the kids a lot. Or Millie. I, I just never... Because I work, I'm in the office. I know who majority of the parents are, but like I said, the kids always just go straight to class and have time. I don't know who they are. So you don't see what happens in the gym. You're in the office, correct? Mm -hmm. So if a parent and a... I mean, I'm all over the place. I'm in and out of the gym. But so you're not constantly at the gym, correct? Not constantly, no. So it's possible that a child got on the floor and you wouldn't know about it. Well, they could get on there, but our coaches are going to tell them to get off. But you don't... You can't assure us that that actually happened, can you? That the coach actually did come and that uh, Layla did not get on the, uh, the slide by herself or with the Yeah, yeah she could have done it and they didn't see it, but as soon as they see a child over there, they're going to get them. But they're, they're handling class, right? Right, but they will say, send somebody over there, another coach that's not doing anything, like if a floor manager or something. Mm -hmm. This time, Your Honor, I would tender into the record Defendant's Exhibit 123 and ask to publish. No objection. Thank you. Thank you. Now, in that picture, there are two levels of bars, are there not? Mm hmm. And do you know what the heights are of those bars? I do not. You don't. That ladder is a Jacob's ladder, correct? Yeah, the ladder is for the team students. That, but that ladder is out there, correct? It's accessible, isn't it? Mm hmm. Is that a yes? Yeah. And what do you have on the floor? Is that uh, hard plastic like we see um, at nursery schools and that sort of thing? The squares, yes. The squares that they just piece in together? Mm-hmm. Okay, so they're not necessarily soft, they're firm, correct? Mm-hmm. Is that yeah. a yes? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're pretty soft, but they're firm too. Mm -hmm. And it's correct, isn't it? Will you, you, would you know if Layla used to sit on the bench or whether she ran around? Would you know that? Um, I would not know that for every single time she came in there. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Did you ever observe Layla um, inside that gym area? No. And those mats, is that plastic or what are they made of? The, the colored squares? Yes, ma'am. They're like the little foamy foam mats that you can get like at Sam's or Walmart or wherever. Thank you. Let me ask you about those dates that, that you had written down for Millie. Uh, Rosenbaum, they were taken by, they were taken, attendance was taken by the coaches, correct? Correct. And uh, 
In fact, November 19th and November 16th, uh, November 9th and November 16th, Millie was not at the, correct? I, I don't know, I didn't memorize the. Okay, well, let's things. see if this helps refresh the record. Correct. Isn't it true, Ms. Blissett, that November 9th, uh, Jim was canceled? I'm not sure. Okay, we'll see if this refreshes your recollection. Okay, that would have been the um, open gym in the morning. Time because but that would have been the gym just the morning class not the evening classes due to the cold weather correct because sometimes when it gets so cold and by 10 30 9 30 in the morning it's not warm it's enough. not warm enough for the little ones to come in there and so you said on November 9th your heat was not in working condition correct isn't that what the, you, you it was not a, a Facebook notice isn't that correct I don't know if it wasn't working or if it just had not had time to warm up. Let's see if this refreshes your recollection. Okay. Well, this says November 16th, November the 8th. It doesn't say the 9th. Well, isn't the one on November the 8th talking about tomorrow being November the 9th? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, does it, so say it says it wasn't working, and so that's why they closed for open gym. Okay. And so if somebody didn't want their children to be in a cold, unheated building, they wouldn't come, correct? Correct. That's why you sent out this notice. Right. Uh, and on November 16th, you sent out the notice saying the heat is still not working, correct? Yes. So if a person did not want their children in the cold, they would not come on 1116 either, would they? Right. Nothing. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. You can step down the objections. And would your, when you taught your 18 to two month old class, would they be involved in um, working on those equipments? Um, a little bit. Yeah, they did. Um, but their parents were with them the entire time, and I was also there. So they didn't do anything alone. Were kids allowed out on the floor in that 18 to 2-year-old class without their parents? No, ma'am. What about um, without a teacher? No. On occasions, would you have kids that would get on the floor that did not have permission to be on the floor? If at any time a kid ran out onto the floor, we sent them right back to their parent, or we would find them, their parent, and have them sit with them. They weren't allowed on the floor. And I'm showing what's been marked as states, exhibit 191 through 196. If you could look through those and let me know if you recognize. recognize those? Yes, ma'am. And what are they? It's the gym. It's the preschool area in the gym. And do they fairly and accurately depict the gym? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that asset states exhibit 191 through 196 be admitted. Well, I'm going to object to the extent that it's not a true and accurate representation of the gym as it was back then. Uh, our pictures that were taken uh, back then show different, uh, different placement in different bars. Am I allowed to say something? Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Am I allowed to say something? Do, the photograph. That's an objection. Your response. Do you recognize these photographs um, as being fairly depicting what the gym looked like in 2015? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Would you change around the equipment um, for various classes? Yes, ma'am. 
I'd ask the state's exhibit 191 through 196 be admitted into evidence. Yes. All right. Can you describe what we're looking at here in stage 191? That is the, um, and I think there's a corner up here or either a laser. Oh, this? Yeah. Oh, you want me to point it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. So this was the, um, this is where I would be. So this, the kids would go in a full rotation and I would stand here because this part was the more, you know, this could be potentially more dangerous. So this is where I would help them. And then other than that, they would go along these little floor beams on the side just to stay in a rotation. So they would stay engaged. And stage number 192, what are we looking at here? Um, this is the vault. So they would, they would go this way. They would all line up here. I would stand down here. They would run down the vault, jump, land, and then they would go this way and they would do these smaller activities just again so that they stay in rotation, that they stay focused. The, in the very back, do you see those lad that ladder back there? Yes, ma'am. Um, right here. That? Was that part of the rotation that your kids would have been involved in, the 18 to two year olds or the three to four year olds? No, ma'am, not unless I took them over there as a group mm -hmm and I would hold them and let them go up and down the ladder, but that was like a special activity we sometimes did if we had extra time in class. And, and what's that ladder made out of? Wood. And what are we looking at in stakes of your Um, From about here over this like line right here, this was preschool, so we didn't do anything with this. Um, but there's the bars. Um, that was also part of their rotation. So they would either start here and they would either grip the bar and swing. Um, over here it could be something like grip the bar and lift, try to lift your feet up, something like that. And what age group of kids would be doing that activity? Um, they would usually do that when they were three or four. Um, the 18 months to two years old. They could like pretend to do it if their parents were holding them, but they never did it on their own. And state's exhibit number 194, what are we looking at here? This is like a parent viewing area. So parents could sit here, students could sit here, but it was, uh, there was that barrier to try to separate the gym from where the parents could sit. And with that barrier, you're talking about the, the roping that's there? Yes, ma'am. In states number 195, what's depicted here? Um, this is just the other half of the gym. This is where the team and um, like rec classes and stuff would do their classes, the foam pits over there. But we didn't go past, my preschool classes didn't go past this over here. So would there be a reason for the preschoolers to be back over on this other side where the higher bars were? No, ma'am, not unless we went to the pit which was right here, and we would usually only do that if I had a class of like three or less and I could keep them all in one little place and the gym was significantly empty. In states, one ninety six, what is the gym in states? So this is the other, oops, sorry, you're fine. This is the other half of the um, beam station. So right here, they can maybe walk across this do a bear crawl here, you know, hop over some like little individuals here, and then this is where I would be to help them again. And what, um, in states of 196, this slide here, what, how would that be part of the rotation? So that's like a filler. Mm -hmm. So we would have, right here is where we would do like a front roll, which would be like what we would be working on. So we'd have one main thing we were working on, and it would be like a front roll for the week. The other activities here are just to keep them in rotation so that they could go up the slide and go down and by the time they come off they'd be ready to stay in line. And then States Exhibit 197, what's depicted in that? This is um, just the floor of the gym where the rec classes and stuff take place, the older, the older classes. Now did you have a to teach 
Millie, Millie Place or Millie Rosenbaum as she was registered. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The lights can come back up. And do you recall when that was that you um, taught classes for, with Millie? Uh, it was fall of 2015, so I believe it was September, October time. And what days um, would Millie take class? She had class uh, Mondays. And how long was that class? 55 minutes. And did you take roll for that class? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I'm sure you what's already been marked as State's Exhibit 190 and it means that you have it. What are we looking at here? That's Let's one of my roll sheets. Okay. Is that your name at the top? Yes, ma'am. And do you see Millie's name? Yes. Okay. And can you tell me, based on that attendance roll, what days did Millie attend? Uh, where all the check marks are. Okay. Well, can you just tell me those dates for the week? Oh, yeah. Let me see, uh, 9, 28, 10, 5, 10, 12, and 10, 19. This is the second page. Uh, uh, 11, 2, 11, 9, and 11, oh, I'm sorry, just 11, 2. She didn't come those two days. So where there's an X on the state's exhibit 190, what does that indicate? That she wasn't in class. And you would have made those notations? Yes, ma'am. How would you describe Millie when she was in your class? What type of little girl was she? She was very sweet. Did you ever have any issues or behavioral issues with Millie while she was in your class? Um, she was very well behaved. Did you ever have any issues with her um, running off and being involved or getting on any of the equipment that you were not, she was not allowed to? No. Do you recall who um, Millie um, would attend classes with? She had class with uh, Macy, okay. another little girl. Who would bring, it were, did you have any other kids in your class? No. For the, for the, I want to say when she was coming, it was down to like just her and another girl in that class. Okay. Right. And I just want to show you what's the digits and the state's exhibit 123. Do you recognize who that is? Yes. Okay. And who's that? That's uh, me and Millie. Okay. And that ladder that we talked about earlier over there, did you ever have an issue with Millie going over and getting on that ladder without your permission? Yeah. Do you recall it during your class, did y'all ever, you said that would be like a special activity, if at any time you guys went over and used that ladder as part of that special activity? We have, yeah, okay. we did. Were there any incidents that you recall if Millie ever fell off or fell down or had any issues on that um, equipment, that ladder? No, okay. I don't recall, I don't think so. If she had, let me ask you, when Millie was in your class, did you ever have any in instance where she got hurt? Not, no, not in my class. Okay. If she had gotten hurt in your class, what would you have done? We would file an injury report. Okay. And during the time that Millie was in your class, did you ever have to file an injury report concerning Millie? No. And I think I asked you, who would bring Millie to class? Uh, Ms. Rosenbaum. And did you know Ms. Rosenbaum prior to Millie attending Gym Tech? No. Did you ever have any interaction or conversation with Ms. Rosenbaum? A few times. Okay. And what would you be talking with her about? Uh, usually just about Millie in class. And um, I just remember one conversation we talked about her family being from South Dakota because my family also is from South Dakota. And do you recall um, Millie's last class with you? Um, like the date? The date, yes. I don't know the date off the top of my head. If the last thing you have checked up on this roll sheet is, you know, who will make it back? November 2nd. Then that would, that would have been it then. Do you recall anything that sticks out in your mind about the last time Millie attended your class? Yes. Can you tell me what that was? She had a very large bruise on the, her face, okay. not her eye. And when you saw that bruise, what did you do? Um, it was significant enough that I was like, oh my God, like what happened? And I asked her and she said, oh, I fell getting out of the bathtub. Did you ask her any more questions about that fall? I asked her again later when we were alone, like we were kind of away from her 
foster parents, I suppose. So let me ask you, the first time you asked her, who was present? It was me, Millie, Macy, and her, uh, Miss Rosenbaum was in the general vicinity, so I moved away later and I asked her again. I said, what happened? How did you get that huge bruise? And she said, I fell, I fell getting out of the bathtub. Why did you feel the need to ask her a second time? It was, it was a very large bruise. Okay. It was very, it was huge. And you said her foster parent. How did you know that Miss Rosenbaum was her foster parent? I actually wasn't made aware of that until um, after the incidents have occurred. So prior to that, who did you think Miss Rosenbaum was to Millie? Her mother. Okay. And to your understanding, what was the name that she was registered to attend gym tech under? Rosenbaum. During the time, you said you taught at Gym Tech for about three or four years. During the time that you were teaching, have you ever had a child to get injured? No, not significant. What type of injuries have, they, have you seen? Uh, maybe they tripped and skinned a knee on the carpet, something like that. Nothing, no broken bones, nothing. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hamilton, you wouldn't speak to us, correct? Ma'am? When we called you, you did not want to speak to us. Isn't that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, now, with regards to uh, this conversation that you had with Millie about her, um, her face, there being a bruise on her face, did you um, tell that to the police? I did not. You did not mention that to the police. But you did give a statement to the police, didn't you? Yes. And you never mentioned to them this conversation, did you? I did tell them. I told the police when they asked me about if I'd ever seen any bruises on the girls, I told them that I'd seen a bruise on Millie. You t and who did you tell the police? Who did I tell the police? Yes. Whoever was the, I told the police. You don't know who it was? No, I don't remember. It you don't was, remember if it was Detective Thompson? I'm not entirely, I honestly don't remember the name. It was a few years ago. Okay, and you told them that you had seen a bruise that was large enough um, that you thought it was significant? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Tell me, did you call the police at that time, at the time you saw the bruise? I did not. Did you talk to Ms. Matheson about that? I did not. Did you call defects? I did not. is Defendant's Exhibit 59. See if you can identify that. Mm -hmm. What is that picture of? That's me and Millie and Macy. And Macy. Yes. Uh, at this time, I've attended Defendant's Exhibit 59, which was taken on October 12, 2015. No objection. Tell us which one is Millie and which one is Macy. Millie is the little one with the black and uh, green. And Macy is in the pink. <coughs> I was 16. Thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. You can step down and you're excused. Unless there's an objection. No, from the state Any objection from the defense? Um, no, I just asked that she remain available for the call. Um, we've got another witness that's going to testify. We may have questions. But... All right. Uh, ma'am, what this means is that uh, you're being released today from these proceedings, but uh, you may be called back at some point later. And so just make sure that you're available, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. You can have a seat. Maria Matheson, M-A-R-I-A-M-A-T-H-E-S-O-N. And Ms. Matheson, are you familiar with um, Gym Tech? Yes, I am. How are you familiar with Gym Tech? I am the owner of Gym Tech. And how long have you owned Gym Tech? 10 years. 
And um, do you have a background in gymnastics? Yes, I do. What's your background? I took uh, tumbling and gymnastics when I was growing up, and I've done coach gymnastics for the last 18 years and done training under USAG. What's USAG? USAG gov governs the Olympics for gymnastics. Um, so we do, I'm a, a safety certified professional member and preschool fundamentals one and two certified trained. Prior to owning GymTech or now, um, did you own any other, um, I guess, businesses that involved teaching gymnastics? Yes, uh, I helped run a mobile gymnastics program um, called uh, Gym Kids Express here in Henry County. Uh, and I helped run that for a few years. How long did you run that? I believe about five years. And um, can you tell me a little bit about how that program worked? Uh, Gym Kids Express was a mobile gymnastics program. We went around to daycare and child care facilities and we coached ages three and four inside the daycares or private schools. Did that involve working with kids using equipment at all? Yes, ma'am. So we would take in our own equipment and we would run classes within the facility. What type of equipment would you take in? Uh, balance beams, uh, preschool fundamental equipment like tunnels, uh, wedge mats where you could do forward roll, backward rolls. Uh, we would take in like a low bar where they could just learn how to grip onto a bar, which is like a little floor bar. Um, and panel mats where they could just do like forward rolls and tumbling on. Did you ever have occasion during the course of time that you were doing the mobile gym where you had a child to be injured? No, ma'am. And um, besides teaching gymnastics at Gym Tech, um, do you have any other gymnastic teams or competitive teams or anything of that nature? Yes, ma'am. We have a competitive women's gymnastics team and a competitive men's gymnastics team. At what age do kids get involved in, um, I guess, the competitive gymnastics? Uh, they can start training in a invite only class at age four uh, and then they can act they actually don't start competing until age five and what type of equipment would someone let's say if they're four um, would be um, utilizing if they were on the competition team uh, they would be utilizing more of our preschool area equipment still working with the preschool bars uh, the balance beam uh, they may go to the beams, but they would be lowered down for that age group. Uh, they would also vault, but on a preschool vault board. And if you were two years old, would you be involved in a competitive um, gymnastics team? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, for the age two, we only offer a parent and taught class, which is a parent assisted class. So the parent has to remain with the child during the class. And I'm showing this number 192 and you can see it behind you. Is that the vault you were just talking about? Uh, yes ma'am, that's a preschool vault. And in your gym, are there certain safety precautions that you take? Oh yes ma'am. Can you tell us about those? Uh, well, we take safety precautions as far as making sure that there's mats in the proper place um, on the equipment, uh, make sure we do an equipment check uh, that the bars are stable, everything's locked in. Um, there's screws when you adjust the bars that you have to, or knobs, you have to make sure you tighten the bars up. Um, just making sure mats and everything are properly placed as far as when you're talking about training on the equipment. And the, can you tell me about the mats? Kind of like how are the mats made? Um, what are the mats like? In well, we gym? do have um, the squared foam mats um, that you piece together. And then underneath, if you were on a bar, you would have another mat up underneath that bar on top of those mats as well. Okay. Let me show you. It states exhibit 191. Do you see kind of that setup where you're talking about the bars and the mats? Yeah, so if you look at this bar right here, that's about a four inch mat that is up underneath that bar. Um, and the other bar is probably about a one to two inch mat up underneath that bar. Um, and then of course you can see the length of the bar is making sure that it's covered enough in front of the bar and covered enough behind the bar. 
And what about um, any other, um, do you know what the thickness of those mats are that um, are utilized? Uh, the one is a four inch mat and the other one's about a two inch mat. Okay. And what about those foam um, puzzle pieces? Uh, the puzzle pieces are probably only about maybe one inch thick. And um, let me ask you in regards to taking precautions, how does the setup for a class go? Um, is it, does it, once it's set up, does it remain the same or does that change and who does it and how? Typically it stays, the setup at the gym stays the same with the mats. Um, the coaches, uh, we do uh, seven to one ratio, so no more than seven students to one coach. Um, they are set up in rotation circuits, so uh, there's a lesson plan for each week and they receive that lesson plan and there's a circuit. So for instance, you took it down, there would be, okay. So if you see right there, that's a beam circuit. So if where the higher beam is would be a coach would be there because that's a higher, more difficult skill. And I'm gonna hand you this. Sorry. You press that little button and it makes that little red laser come off. Okay. Um, press it at the top. Oh, press it at the top, thank you. Okay, not sure if I have it right, right here. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so this is a, um, a higher beam. So this is going to be a coach-assisted skill. Many of the coach is going to be right here, um, assisting the athlete um, across the beam uh, so that there's no injury, just because this beam is raised up a little bit higher. Um, so you can catch if there was a fall or anything like that. And then they're going to go down over here, and they're going to do another skill on this beam. And you can't see in the picture, but there's another beam that runs across that way and then the beam that comes this way. So the coach would be here assisting the child across, watching this area, and they would go around and come back up the stairs and go, that would be a circuit, a station. Okay. okay. And you said your ratio is seven to one. Seven to one. Okay. And what about the training, um, any other safety precautions that you take as far as the gym equipment is concerned? Uh, as far as the gym equipment is concerned, it's just always making sure that the coaches are know to come in, make sure the mats are placed properly, the beams are where they are, the mats are up underneath the beam, um, checking the bar. Usually coaches aren't adjusting the bar. Um, typically it's set up for their class for that circuit for the day. And how often are those safety precautions taken as far as making sure the bars are locked, the mats are in place? How often does that happen? Of every class, every, every day as they come in. Okay. And what about training for your staff? Um, what type of training do you provide for your coaches? So we, um, I'm preschool fundamentals certified trained in uh, preschool fundamentals one and two. Uh, and then I have a partner that works with me that is a national uh, judge under USAG. Um, so we've also attend the World Congress training that USA Gymnastics offers. And then we bring that in with our staff. We've also had from time to time they come to our facility and have offered training at our facility, which is um, Preschool Fundamentals 1 and 2 certification, proper ways to coach, safety certifications, those type things. And um, are you familiar with um, someone by the name of Natalie Harrington? I am. Would she have gone through that training as part of being an employee with your, off, with your gym? Yes, yeah, so she would have gone through training. We start training. Uh, we do a full extensive training uh, in the summer before we start our fall session. Mm -hmm. And we do another coaches staff meeting. We do training again, usually around December before we go into uh, our springtime training. And then we've also had, like I said, I think I believe Natalie did participate in when we had the outside certified coaches come in and they do a, where you receive a certificate for participating in a preschool fundamental training class. And are you familiar with Michaela Stone? Yes, ma'am. And who's Michaela Stone? Michaela is one of my coaches as well. Would she have also gone through this training that you just described? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me ask you, in regards to injuries at your gym, have you ever had occasion to have a child injured at the gym? Yes, we've had, had children to be injured. Okay. And what is the process and procedure if a child is injured? There is a injury report and they are to fill out the injury report and then the injury report has to also be signed by the parent and the coach. Okay. And when you talk about injuries, how many injuries would you say you've had at your gym? Well, it depends on what type of injury you're asking. Let me start there. What types of injuries have you seen um, happen with kids at your gym? I, we've seen anything from uh, a knee scrape to our, I've seen more injuries with our competitive gymnasts that have actually had like a break. 
talking more on the competitive side. Let's talk about your kids that are in your mommy and tot class. Yes. Um, any injuries there, and if so, what type? No injuries in a parent tot class. And what about the three to four year old class? Uh, three year old, four class, nothing other than maybe a knee scrape um, or uh, a fall down and maybe a child complaint. But even if it's a fall in a complaint that's made by the child or they say, oh, I hurt my arm or I hurt this, I hurt that, the coaches are still required to fill out an injury report because we can't tell if there's an injury there or not specifically. So they're still required to document it down so that we have it on file. And we're required to do that by our insurance as well. Okay. And when, um, as far as your mommy and me class, um, how often would those classes be run? at the gym let's say back in 2015 specifically how many, uh, how many during that classes? time we only had one parent and taught class okay. and on what days was that class held uh, I believe on Monday we had a parent and taught class on Mondays and if a parent was interested in having their child attend what procedures did they have to go through to participate in a class even for the mommy and taught class Okay, so we offer uh, free trial classes. Anytime you come in for a class, you have to check in with the front office, sign a waiver form, give your information, and then they can participate in a class. And I think we talked about um, this equipment, these bars, for a, a parent in tight class, these bars here. Um, would kids be participating or be involved in using that particular equipment? Uh, yes, they could be. So at a parent and tot, really actually a child's hand cannot really fully grip around the bar. But what we do do is teach them to do a reach to the bar um, and try to grip onto the bar. And then we would have them like do something as maybe try to pull their knees up. Um, and we usually instruct and show the parents that they're just going to try to lift their feet up off of the bar, which is kind of working that core area. Um, most children at that age are still trying to figure out how to use their core. So that's really what that is for. Um, we also would show the parent that they could put their arm up underneath the toddler and just kind of try to do a swinging motion. But you really have to hold on to them because they're really not, their hands are not large enough to fully grip around that bar. Okay. Do you know what, what would the height of those bars be set at for a parent in top class? Uh, somewhere around 40 to 45 inches from the ground up. Uh, well, for, if you went from the bar up, or it would depend on the mat. So if the mat's under there, it might be around 42 inches with the mat. So it depends on if you're counting it from the bar, from the floor where the base is mm -hmm. to the top of the bar, or if you're going from the mat to the top of the bar. So let's say from the mat. I'd say to 40 the... to 45 inches. Okay. Probably from somewhere the, in there. From the mat to the bar. Yeah. Okay. But, but the goal is to make sure that the child can stand on their feet and hold the bar from their feet. Okay. Nothing and, above. And are children or parents allowed to, let me ask you, are children allowed to be out on the mats or on the floor or any equipment without um, a coach or a staff member from Gym Tech? No, ma'am. They must be enrolled in a class in order to be out on the floor. Have you had occasions where kids would run out, say they're there with a the sibling, and run out and get on the equipment or anything of that nature? Of course we have. And we have all the coaches and staff are instructed to immediately let them know that if they're not involved in a class, you must step off of the floor. Um, and that's, that's a continued process and watch at the gym. Um, I usually have several coaches there, so everybody knows, you know, if, they, if you don't see them actively involved in a class, then they shouldn't be just freely running around the gym. Would parents and children have access to the inside of the gym and be on the mats without a staff member being inside that gym area? No, ma'am, they should not be. And um, in 2015, did you have a free play? Oh, we had an open gym play. Open gym, okay. Yes, ma'am. And um, do, to your knowledge, do you know um, if Millie Place, Rosenbaum, or Layla Daniel ever participated in your free play, or open play? Not in my knowledge. I didn't have any record of either one of them attending open gym play. Okay. 
do you recall um, ever having any interaction with uh, Layla Daniels? Yes, I do. And what about Millie Rosenbaum Place? Not any really interaction with Millie other than just visually seeing her in a class. And were you working on October the 19th of 2015? Uh, yes. And to your knowledge, on um, what day of the week was that? Uh, Monday. And um, was Millie Place, um, I guess, enrolled at the gym? Yes. And to your understanding, um, did you ever meet the defendant, Jennifer Rosenbaum? Yes. And when Millie would come to the gym, who would she be brought by? Uh, as far as I knew, she was brought by her mom. Okay. Okay. Yes. And when you say as far as I knew she was brought by her mom, what do you mean by that? Uh, Jennifer. Okay. And would um, Layla Daniel be present during that time, during those times? Uh, yes. Okay. I, uh, yes. Did you ever have an opportunity to observe um, Millie Place while she was involved in class when she was there? Um, uh, only for briefly between walking in the gym and around and visually looking over and then going to my office. I didn't really sit in on the actual classes. So usually I was coming into work during that time uh, and would just be going straight to the office and would be visually seeing what was going on or kids in classes or parents on the bench, that type of thing. What about Layla Dean? Did you ever have an opportunity to observe her um, during the times that Millie would be in class? Uh, I didn't observe her like in the gym. Okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. When, let me ask you this. I didn't observe her in a class ever. Okay. Did you ever observe her in the inside of the gym area where class would be going on? No. Okay. And were you involved actively teaching these classes during the time that they would be going on? No. Do you recall ever getting any reports in regards to Millie injuring herself at um, Gym Tech? No, ma'am. Was ever any injury reports filled out? No, ma'am. And what about um, Layla Daniel? What was your interaction with her? Uh, I met her, uh, her when uh, Jennifer had come to the office inquiring about uh, wanting my office manager uh, Trisha had called me asking if it was okay to do a six month out billing. She wanted to, my approval if that was okay to do that. She explained uh, there was a defect situation um, and would that be okay? And I said, yes, absolutely, that would be fine. Um, I came in one day and uh, Jennifer was there trying to handle the paperwork with Trisha in the office and that was my first encounter with her and Layla at that time. Do you recall what day that was? I believe it was November 2nd. And when, when you, where were you at when you encountered um, the defendant, Jennifer? Uh, so I was actually in my office, so there's a window, um, so you have to go out of the office to the main lobby area, and there was just a window there. Uh, and um, she was trying to handle paperwork with Trisha, and I could just, I heard Layla crying during that time, and I was on the opposite side. When you say um, it's a window outside, is the, I guess, the gym area where kids will be having class or practicing, is that in a separate area from where the office area is? Yes, ma'am, separate area. So we have a large lobby with, with some offices within that lobby, and then we have separate doors that enter actually into the training facility. And you said that you observed um, the defendant, Jennifer Rosenbaum, with Layla. Yes, ma'am. And what was Layla doing when you observed her? She was crying, just crying and really upset, and she was trying to handle business, and um, I just naturally kind of take the kids, and I know as a parent, you're trying to take care of some things, your child's crying, I just kind of went around the corner to calm or comfort or cheer her up. And what happened when you went around the corner to cheer uh, Layla up? I went around the corner and uh, noticed she, you know, had a cast on, and she was just kind of continuously crying and crying, and. I just said, oh, and I said, oh my goodness, and it's okay, and I said, wow, you know, what happened? That's a big cast, you know, just kind of talking to her like that, and um, asked, and I didn't really get a reply just other than, oh, she's just upset because the doctor said she needs to walk on it, and she's mad because she doesn't want to walk. Who were you asking about what happened 
Did you, were you talking to Layla when you asked about what happened, or were you talking to the defendant? Uh, I was kind of looking at both and like kind of looked up, you know, at the mom, and she was talking to the office manager, and then just turned around and gave me the reply and just said she's mad, she doesn't want to walk on it, but the doctor said she needs to get used to walking on it, and she spoke that directly to me. Did she ever mention that the injury um, had occurred at Gym Tech? No. What happened after, um, I guess, were you able to calm Layla down? A little bit. She kind of calmed down a little bit, and she and I were kind of talking, and I was just trying to play with her, and um, uh, Mom, or Jennifer, I guess, finished up her paperwork and got all that done uh, and, you know, explained, you know, I guess she was not going to be doing any classes or whatever, and then I just said, oh, I'm, you know, I introduced myself to her, I said, I'm Maria Matheson, I'm the owner, so if you ever need anything, just let me know. Excited you guys are here, and that was pretty much it. And at the point that you introduced yourself at the owner, did she ever mention about the injury of Layla occurring at the gym? No, ma'am. Where was Millie during this um, interaction? Did, was she there? She would have been in class. At some point, did, I guess, my office come out and ask you to um, do a video of a mommy and tot class for us? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me show you what's marked the State's Exhibit 197. Do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. How are you able to recognize it? Um, I initialed it the moment that they did the video and did the disc, and they asked me to view it, and then I initialed and dated it. Were there any changes or deletions or modifications to it? No, ma'am. Uh, State would ask the State's Exhibit 197 be admitted evidence for demonstrative purposes. So objection would be whether it was done during the time frame of 2015 it wasn't I can play a little bit for the foundation. When we asked you to demo, do this demo, was it in conjunction with how class was run in 2015? Yes, ma'am. Had y'all made any changes about how you run a parent taught class since 2015? No, ma'am. Okay. I'd ask that State's Exhibit 197 be admitted. It's admitted. Thank you. May it be public. Uh, so that's a parent assisted class. So if you can see, that's the parent there helping. Um, so she's reaching to the bar, and then the parent's trying to assist her into grabbing the block with her legs. Um, and there again, to try to lift it with her legs or work on that core strength. Um, but there again, like you can see, if they weren't able to reach the bar, there would be another mat up underneath them so they could actually reach up to the bar. But you want the child to be able to reach on to that bar um, and hold. And there again, the parent's right there with them, assisting them through that skill. And when you did the demo, did you hold class, or how did you go about doing this, these demonstrations for us? Uh, this team? was actually a, a class that was in progress that was videoed. Oh. <coughs> and before you talked about doing various different, the, you said the beams, that was a beam cycle. Did they, um, the kids go through the same cycle every class? So usually they're going to hit anywhere from three to four what I would call stations at a time. So like a beam station, a bar station, uh, and like a tumble station. Okay. So each station, uh, they're going to spend maybe 10 minutes at a station, uh, depending on um, uh, how the class is going with the children listening and following direction and all that. As they get a little anxious, then we might move on to another station to redirect them. And I guess, do you do the same stations for every class or does it change um, from week to week as to what you're We do have do? lesson plans. So typically every two weeks, the lesson plan will change. And who, um, I guess, who comes up with that lesson plan? So under, um, there is called a hands-on training where you can actually purchase um, flip, uh, flip preschool training. You can actually purchase lesson plans. So we have lesson plans that we actually purchase. Um, and there's some you can purchase through USA Gymnastics as well. Uh, so we would go buy those lesson plans and just redo them. They have like actually themed months and different things like that. In the video we were watching um, just a few minutes ago, um, what age group of 
class um, is that? The one that we just had up was a parent and taught class. class. And what are the ages for that parent and taught class? Uh, 18 months to age three. So they can't go into class by themselves till they're three. So if Layla was enrolled um, at Gym Tech um, during the period of time of 2015, if she was two years old, she would have been attending in, in that type of class. Is that what you're saying? Yes, correct. She would have to attend a actual parent and taught class, a parent assisted class. Now, prior to the parents coming into the class, are they given any training of how to work with their kids, how to hold them, or anything like that during, that, um, during the time that they would be participating in the class with the kids? Yes, yeah, so what's going to happen is when they come in and before the coach does the station, the coach is going to show the parents what is going on at each station. For instance, if they were working on forward walks, they might say down beam one is going to be a forward walk, down beam two is going to be sideways, down beam three is going to be a backwards walk, and beam four will be a spotted um, kicks with the coach. So. Uh, they're going to let the parent know what to do. If it's like uh, forward rolls or something like that, then they're going to let them know to support the head. But generally, we try to let the staff do anything that needs to be spotted. So that would have been working on a front support, and as you can see, there was another elevated mat up underneath of that so that her feet could still make sure that they were coming down. So being as she was pressing up and going slightly above the bar in a front support, you wanted to make sure there was another mat there so she didn't have, if she was to come off of the bar, it wasn't as far of a drop down to the other mat. So that was just basically working on a front support. And there again, supported by the parent holding at the waist, supporting the front support, and helping them down off of the bar. Yes, ma'am. So the parent's supporting underneath the arm, making sure that the child's coming down safely off of the bar. Are you wanting me to explain these? I'm sorry. So that child was a little bit smaller, so if you could see the actual coach was there trying to show how to grip the bar. He wasn't quite realizing how he needed to grab onto the bar. Um, so she's helping, trying to show him how to grab onto the bar. And was that, um, was that the same mat setup that you were talking about before? Yes, and there again, as you can see, his, um, his he is right there at height of the bar. That's why the additional mat is set up underneath of him. So there's actually two mats there. Uh, I believe about 
three or four maybe. It's basically trying to teach a child how to grip an object with their feet, use that core to lift their toes up, which would be another skill as they advance on. They would then probably in the following two week lesson plan, it might have been where they grip the bar instead of the block, they're grabbing onto the scarf and trying to pull their toes up holding the scarf. Uh, so that was basically just a core strength training, piking up, grabbing an object. Uh, that's a balance beam rotation. So as you can see, the beam that's inclined, that's actually the coach instructor that's with the child there. Uh, so they had to walk up an incline beam uh, just to get them used to the height. Uh, and then they were able to tap or grab the balloon or kind of play with the balloon once they made it to the end of the beam. That's a tumbling station. Uh, so there again, just working on strength train, training, um, motions, uh, they uh, incline again, um, inverted, like an inverted drill on the, which that round dome is a mushroom. Um, getting the child used to going upside down. Uh, if you saw, then they went to the incline mat where they inverted and actually rolled over with the coach. So there, that's an inversion drill. That was a cartwheel, so the other mat that you could see. The first two, uh, what we call our French fries that were on the floor, there again, that's an inversion. Going, placing the hands down, being able to hop over a French fry. And then the next one was going into working on like a cartwheel, trying to teach them like a cartwheel. So hand, feet down, hands down, and then a hop back over to the feet, um, which is there again, also an inverted drill. So that's a vault drill. So they're learning how to run down the vault runway, um, jumping off of the vault, of course, onto a mat. Uh, and then that was probably crawling down or hopping down the yellow line across the hearts and back around.
excuse me? What was shown in that video? Uh, that was just a um, view of the entire, pretty much the entire facility where training's going on. Uh, there were a few of the competitive athletes in there, other recreational classes that were going on, uh, tumbling class. Uh, there was a station on the tumble track and it looked like regular classes running on the uh, uh, opposite floor as well. And then parents observation area. Do they ever, the classes, the identity or recreation, are they ever intermingling or mixing together um, while they're there inside the gym? Like are they working on the same equipment at the same time? Not the same equipment at the exact same time, no. Uh, that was team training on the actual floor. Uh, on the trampoline area was a, another class that was going on. I can tell that because it's mostly boys. So, um, And then on the opposite floor it looked like another team training group. And then there was recreational class. And would the um, parent top class ever be over on that side of the No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, there's been a request for a five minute break. I'm going to grant it. So just take us the opportunity for a stretch break. We'll see you back in the uh, in a quarter minute moment. Thank you. Some questions I'd like to ask you. If you don't hear me or if I'm not talking loud enough, please let me know. Okay. Okay. Um, you're the owner of, of uh, Gym Tech for Kids. Yes, ma'am. And, um, it's your testimony, and I want to make sure that I, I heard you correctly, that you would always keep a mat, you build up the mats so that the child could reach the bars, correct? Yes, unless it's a progression, then they can, they can go up, or there could be progressions within the lesson plan, but there's always some type of mat underneath the bar. Okay, and um, when you stack the mat, you stack the mats up, it's so that the child can reach, standing up, can reach and hold on to the, the bar, correct? It depends on the skill and the age of the child. Okay, let's talk about, about children Layla's age. You would build it up so that they could reach the bar and hold on to it. Yes, ma'am. So if it's an instructed lesson plan with us, then it typically is going to be where they can reach the bar. Um, if there, if there's always that. So the mats that are always down, the color block mats are always there, no matter what. So there's never going to be a bar placed on the concrete. There could be a lesson plan where the parent is able to lift, but their feet should not be hanging far from the mat or the, even the square mats, the colored block mats that are down. The, the bars always remain on top of those mats. And 
the child, therefore, should be able to stand and reach the bar. It could stand and reach, or if it's a parent-assisted class, the inst uh, parent could also pick them up and allow them to grip the bar. And in that case, there would be more distance between them. Uh, it shouldn't be any more than like a maybe two foot distance between. Let me show you what I've marked as exhibits 127 and 128. Exhibits 127 and 128, mm -hmm. and see if you can identify those pictures. Mm -hmm. So that's like an actual instructor that is holding her up. So well, she's that's an instructor. First of all, identify the photo, and then we can show it to the Oh, yes, I identify the photo. It's a photo of what? Uh, my instructor holding a child. Okay. And then. And number 128. And that is a mat with a vault board up underneath the mat. And that's looks like she's assisting her down from the bar. This time I would tender 127 and 128 into the record and ask if I may publish. Tell us what we're seeing here. So that's working on teaching the child to jump from a vault to reach to the bar. So that's a instructor assisting uh, the child on that particular skill. So they would go up the incline of a vault and jump and try to reach to grip onto the bar, this, spotted by the instructors. This here is the vault, correct? Yes, ma'am. There's and, no mat on the vault, is there? Yes, it's a carpet padded, that's carpet padded, it's not solid wood. But it's carpet padded, but there's no foam mattress on top of it. No foam mat on top of it, is there? That's not a foam mat, but it is, there is Carpeting. a thickness in it. And the child cannot reach from... On her own, no, but she's being assisted so with an instructor. If she were to fall, we're talking about two or three feet. Well, she, the instructor wouldn't let her go to hang by herself. So she's not left alone by herself. If you went and dropped and her arms were actually hanging straight and her feet were hanging down towards the vault, you would only have a couple of feet between the vault and her actual feet. And then you would have about five or six inches from the vault to the mat. Yes, that there's point. the vault and there's another mat up underneath the vault. And Number 128, tell us what we're seeing here. Um, it looks like she's about to prep to teach her to prep to go up and to teach her to reach and grip to the bar. Either that or she was bringing her down from the bar. Ms. Madison, on November 2nd, um, you say you saw Layla cried and tried to comfort her, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you didn't notice any bruises or marks on her, did you, other than her broken leg? Uh, well, she had on, uh, her cast completely covered her leg and she had on clothes, so no, not to my recognition. I don't remember seeing any additional bruises or anything. Let me show you what I've marked as 126. Identify this photograph. Uh, it's a child climbing up the, the steps. Okay, thank you. At this time, Your Honor, I would tender 126 into the record and ask if it may be. No objections. show you what I've marked as 124 and 125. I'm 
reference for the marches 124 and 125. Let's see if you can identify those by number, please. What, what specifically are you asking me to identify? What are these pictures of your gym? Are they pictures of somebody else's gym? No, these are pictures of my facility. Okay, and are they true and accurate copies of, um, do they truly and accurately represent your facility? Yes. Thank you. At this time, Your Honor, I would hand the defendant's exhibit 124 and 125 into the record. They will object to 124, they'll object to 125. Your Honor, if I may, Coach. I heard the foundational response was that they truly and accurately represent the facility. So. The, state, the state's objection is as to relevance to this particular case, Judge. I don't know what that particular picture represents that's relevant to the facts in this case. Your Honor, this is no more, no different than showing a video of uh, children climbing up, up and down on, on uh, apparatus. This is just a still photo. Oh, the 124 and 125? Oh. Your Honor, this time I'd ask if I could uh, show it. About how old is this child? Um, the picture is kind of blurred, so to me, maybe three. Okay. And uh, is this an accurate reflection of what something that transpired at your gym? Yes, this is, looks like a child training an Arab Basque on a balance beam. And that child looks approximately three to possibly four. And she could also be, looks like it's one of my more advanced students by her body position is in perfect <laughs> form. So that looks like more of a advanced. Three-year-old? Uh, three to four-year-old uh, doing a front support uh, with straight legs, pointed toes, and a perfect <coughs> arm position with a mat up underneath her. Is this not in fact Allison Heath? Uh, is this not in fact uh, Lila Heath? Uh, her face is down and I have about approximately 400 students plus in my facility, so I wouldn't be able to say specifically okay. if that's Allison Heath. Did Layla Daniel participate or involved do any of these exercises at your gym on October the 19th of 2015? No, ma'am. To my knowledge, I don't know if her, other than that the, she had inquired about doing a class, uh, my office manager, Tricia, informed her that she needed to sign the waiver form. Do you have any testimony about what the office manager said to her? Response? I'll move on without telling me what someone else told you. It was to my knowledge that she was had inquired about doing a class. She was asked to fill out the waiver form. Later when... One second. Okay. Sorry. What calls for her testifies to what somebody else told her, whether she got or not. I'll, I'll ask a different All right. Did you ever observe Layla Daniel doing the activities that are depicted in Defense exhibits 127 and 120. No, I never observed Layla doing any class. What about in Defense 126? I never observed her doing that either. Defense 125. Did I never you ever observed Layla Daniel doing any of that at your gym. No, I did not. And Defense 124. No, I did not. 
to your knowledge, did Layla Daniel participate or be enrolled in any classes at Jim Tech? She was not enrolled in any class at Jim Tech. Thank you. Matheson, but she took a trial class. She did not sign up for a trial class, nor did she sign a waiver to participate in a trial class. But you don't know that she didn't take a trial class. My coach informed me that the parent... Objection to what somebody else told you. Well, Judge, she asked the question. I think she should be allowed to answer. Mm -hmm. My coach informed me that the parent or guardian took her out on the floor for approximately two rotations and the child continued to cry and she took her off saying, I don't think she's going to do it. Uh, but she never signed up for the trial and never turned in a waiver to participate in a trial class. But she did participate in two rounds of a trial class. According to my coach, the parent took her out on the floor. Thank you. Those two rounds that she participated in, did it involve the beam, the bar, or to my knowledge, no, it was only a Ford roll station. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You can step down. Thank you. Any objection to this Please state your first and last name and spell it, please. Catherine Brown, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N, Brown, B-R-O-W-N. Ms. Brown, how are you employed? I'm a crime scene technician for Henry County Police Department. And how long have you been a crime scene technician for Henry County Police Department? Uh, for Henry County, since 2010. Prior to that, I worked in DeKalb County from 2005. And what are your duties as a, a um, crime scene tech? Uh, our, our unit is not like on television. Uh, we are not detectives. We are civilian personnel. And our duties are different depending on each scene, but they do include everything from photography, videos, sketching, collecting and processing for latent prints, the examination of latent prints, uh, blood pattern analysis. Um, Anything else you do? <laughs> <laughs> we do a lot. Um, let's see. We run APHIS and ULW, which are uh, systems that are used to identify fingerprints within the lab, uh, and we collect a lot of data. But we are not detectives. We do not do the interviews or the arrests. At some point, did you become involved in um, the case of the state of Yes, I did. And how did you become involved in that case? On uh, November 24, 2015, I was requested to uh, go with Detective Witt for a follow-up. And where did you have to go with Detective Witt? Uh, 175 Kendra Drive in McDonough, Georgia, uh, gymnastics facility. And do you know what was the purpose of you going to that gymnastics facility? Uh, to document the appearance of the facility, to examine the equipment, and look at the area where the toddlers uh, played or took classes. And I'm showing what's been marked as State's Exhibit 198 to 212. If you could flip through those and let me know if you recognize them. Yes, I recognize them. And um, do they fairly and accurately depict what you saw when you went out to the gym location? Yes, ma'am. Same with that, the state's 198 through, one, two, through 212 be admitted into evidence. Yes, no objection. Okay. Let me show you what's been marked the state's number 198. And if you could please describe what we're looking at in state's 198. All right, uh, so we photographed the general appearance of the gymnastics area. And we also took photographs of the equipment that was used for the toddlers. Uh, and we took photographs with scales as well, so you could see the size and the distance off the ground of the items. And which um, equipment are we looking at here? Which? This is a, a beam that's used for kids. It's about that high off the ground. It's basically just a long board that kids learn to walk and balance on. What measurement are you taking in um, States 198? Uh, it is four inches wide. And what part of the beam is that? The top. And in States number... Okay, this would be uh, another small beam, and the distance from the ground is 18 inches off of the ground. Okay, another portion of the area, uh, you can see the connected mats and other uh, pads that they play on. Two oh one. Uh, a little tight slide. In states 
states 202. Uh, the distance to the top of the slide. And what was that distance? Uh, let me look at my smaller one, see if I can, the one up close, if I may. Help me. Or the actual photograph. No, I have it. You want me to bring it up to yes, you? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. So to the top of the blue area, that's about 36 inches right there. Thank you. Land States Exhibit 203. Uh, another photograph showing the general appearance of the room. Land States 204. Uh, this is one of the bars that they had there. And what appears to be underneath that bar? Those are all pads. States 205. Uh, that's showing the width of the bar itself. And what was that? Uh, one and a half. In states 206. And if I need to bring it to you to see the measurement, I can. If you would, please. Thank what you, What were you measuring in this? Just the distance from the bar to the ground. Okay, one, two, three. So it's about three foot five inches to the very top of the bar from the ground. And this is an adjustable bar, too, so it could be lowered as well. But we photographed it in the position it was when we got there. In States Exhibit 207, what are we looking at here? Uh, the width of the base at the bottom of that. Uh, that's just simply showing mats again underneath the equipment. Is this the same bar or another bar? I believe this is the same bar. Oh, no, that's um, my apologies. That's a different one. The mats are clearly different. And I'm going to come a little bit closer so you can look at the measurements because I know it's difficult to see from there. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, looks like it's uh, three foot two inches to the very top of the bar from the ground. Exhibit 209. Ten, I'm sorry, 210. What are we looking at there? Uh, it looks like she's taking a measurement on the top. And it states 211. And uh, one and a half inches, approximately. And states exhibit 212. And I'll probably have to bring it up to you. Yes. See that. Uh, and that would be the bar underneath it again, just the. Thank you. Looks like that's approximately one and a half inches as well. I'm sorry, ma'am? You photographed what you saw. I photographed the general appearance of the toddler area. But you, it's what you saw, correct? You didn't set it up. That's correct, ma'am. It is how it was appeared when we arrived. And in fact, the balance beam can be raised or lowered, isn't that true? And Ms. McKee, are you familiar with Gym Tech? Yes, ma'am. And how are you familiar with Gym Tech? Uh, my daughter, Macy, was enrolled at Gym Tech. And when was it that your daughter, Macy, was enrolled in Gym Tech? Uh, we started in, I think it was October of 2015, and we, maybe a couple of months ago, stopped going. So. 
And how old was Macy in 2015? Uh, she was okay, four at the time. In, in the class that, um, what type of class was she attending at Gym Tech? Um, just a pre-K gymnastics class. And um, were there any other children involved in that class? Yes, there was just one other child. And do you recall who that child was? Yes, um, her name was Millie. <clears throat> and um, do you recall who would bring Millie to that class? Um, her mother, Jennifer. And when you say Jennifer, are you speaking of Jennifer Rosenbaum? Yes. And had you met Jennifer Rosenbaum prior to your daughter attending gym tech? No, ma'am. What days would your daughter have class? Uh, I think it was on Mondays, Monday afternoon. And was Millie always in the class with your daughter once she started in October? Yes, ma'am. And did you ever have any conversation with Jennifer Rosenbaum during, let me ask you first of all, while your daughter was in class, where would you be? Um, we would sit on a bench um, right in front of the, the class, maybe just a few feet away, uh, a bench that was attached to the wall for parents to sit. And would you be able to go onto the, um, the floor at all? Um, if, ne um, if, if necessary, um, I, I didn't, but it, um, if I needed to, for some reason, I could have. <clears throat> Um, did you have to fill out any paperwork or do anything? Uh, yes, ma'am. What do you recall having to fill out? Um, uh, I'm sure it was our address information, um, probably any sort of um, questions about allergies or just information about my child or uh, I can't really remember, but I'm sure just a standard form of just basic information or things they may need, may need to know. Do you recall if you had to fill out any waivers? Absolutely. And when did you fill out that waiver? Um, I think immediately, whenever we signed up uh, for the gym. I'm sure I had to sign a waiver before she was allowed to participate in anything. Okay. I'm sure it was already been introduced into Evidence States Exhibit Number 194. You can look behind you. Okay. Do you recognize that area? Yes. And what is that? <coughs> Just a parent waiting area. Okay. Is that what you were describing when you said you, where you would be at during class? Yes, ma'am. And... Um, did you ever observe um, Jennifer Rosenbaum during those classes? Yes, ma'am. And where would she be? We would normally sit together. Okay. And would they be? Would there be anyone else with you or Miss Rosenbaum? Uh, not normally. Her, she had her other little girl with her. Okay. And do you recall um, that other little girl's name? Uh, Layla. Okay. And what would Layla be doing while the girls were in class? Um, she would sit, lay on the bench. The entire time. Did you ever see her out on the mats or, or participating in any class during the time you were there? No. Okay. Um, did you ever see her up walking around or running around the gym um, on equipment when class was not going on? No. Did you ever observe her out on the mats with Jennifer Rosenbaum um, playing on any of the equipment? No ma'am. Um, what would Layla's demeanor be during the time that the class was going on? She seemed very maybe sleepy. Um, um, not like your typical child, I guess. Not, not, not rambunctious, not energetic, very tired maybe. She would just lay down. Did you ever mention um, her demeanor to the defendant Jennifer Rosenbaum? I did. I uh, was, I guess, curious because it seemed peculiar to me. Um, my daughter only being a few years older, I thought it was bizarre that she was so calm and um, kind of quiet. So I think I did ask her, you know, is everything okay? And what was, did she respond to you? Uh, she did. Um, she explained that, uh, well, I think at first she said, oh, she's always like this. She's just, you know, I can take her anywhere. She's very... Um, calm and quiet and um, yes so <clears throat> do you call her telling you anything else about Layla yes um, and let me ask you was this the first time you had met Miss Rosenbaum when you had this conversation or sometime later um, I, it's hard for me to remember I don't remember if it was the first time or if it was a second time um, but she did go into a little bit more detail kind of about her demeanor uh, I think I may have asked her again just 
I was just curious um, why she was so calm and quiet. I think she can talk about her own feelings, Your Honor. And would you ever have any conversation outside of Gym Tech with Jennifer Rosenbaum? No. And you stated that you were curious about Layla's demeanor? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And did you further inquire about her demeanor? I did. And who did you um, ask about her demeanor? Um, I asked Jennifer. Okay. And what did she tell you? Uh, she said that she, I guess, described her behavior being that way because she was um, in an abusive home and that they were actually fostering to adopt her so that it explained, I guess, her odd behavior. Did you ever talk to Jennifer about Millie? Um, well, very little. Um, I did ask her at one point, um, why would she adopt um, a child who had been through so much when she already had a daughter? Ever see Layla walking around while she was at the gym? No. Did you have any other conversation um, with Jennifer um, while you would be at the gym? Um, we, we talked about mom stuff, um, I, just small talk about uh, different things. Um, I think I asked her if they were going trick or treating. We talked about stuff like that, but um, we did we did talk extensively. You know, the class was an hour long, so we we would talk the entire class each time. Would she share anything with you about herself personally, Jennifer Rosenbaum? Um, yes, ma'am. She told me just basic things that she was an attorney and um, 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 probably where she lived, you know, or the area. Anything else you can recall besides her telling you that she was an attorney? Um, we talked about discipline a little bit. She said that um, it, seemed, it seemed like she's very strict on her children. She said that um, we were ta actually talking about Halloween and I asked if they would go trick-or-treating and I made the comment that I didn't really like to give my kid candy because it would make her really hyper and I can't exactly remember how the conversation went but she did say something about how she, she made the girls uh, run stairs. Uh, run laps if they, I guess, misbehaved. Did she tell you any other forms of um, discipline she would use? Um, I think that was all. About how many classes do you recall um, attending, Millie attending and Macy attending? Um, I think it was maybe four or five-ish, I think. <clears throat> Did you ever observe any injuries or bruising on Millie at all? Um, yes, ma'am, I did. Um, I, I'm sorry? Can you tell me about that and when it was? Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't exactly remember when. It seems like it would have been a few times after me meeting them. Millie had a, a bruise on her on her face, on her cheek, on her cheekbone area. Um, and, yeah. It, um, did you inquire about that, that bruise with anyone, to Jennifer or to Millie at all? Um, I want to, I'm trying to remember. Um, I, someone asked Millie what happened, and Millie just sort of paused and said that she, she fell. Um, but she, she took a moment and I, I noticed that she just looked right at Jennifer and paused and then she finally said, yes, I fell. And so was Jennifer present when you asked her about her face? Yes, ma'am. Is that the only time you noticed a bruise on Millie? Yes, ma'am. When you, I want to back up for just a moment. When Miss 
when the defendant Jennifer Rosenbaum was telling you about Layla's history with the biological parents, um, did she give you any more information about whether her relationship with the biological parent? Yes, ma'am. She stated that she was friends with the, or that she, I'm sorry, she knew the biological mother, that they were in foster care together as children. And how did she describe their relationship, if, if at all? Um, they, I, don't, I don't think they had a relationship at all, but she definitely did not like her from what I gathered. Uh, she did not say, you know, she just said that it wasn't good. She wasn't a good mom. Would Layla be present at all the classes that Millie attended when you were there? I think so. I think all but maybe one. Okay. And that one time, um, did you have any discussion with Jennifer about Layla's absence? Yes, I did, actually. I asked her, you know, where was she? And she said that, I think she said she was with her dad, that um, she was having a, a difficult time potty training her and um, seemed very... I guess irritated about like she kind of had enough or was frustrated with her so that she wanted her dad to deal with her. Do you recall um, which class that was? Was it first class or the last class? Um, it might have been in the middle. It definitely wasn't the first class. At any point in time did you observe any injuries on Layla? Yes. Can you tell me if you can recall when that was? Um, I think it was it was either the first or second time that I saw Layla. Um, she was. It, it must have been the second time because um, she, she was laying on the bench, and my daughter had a little stuffed animal, and she asked Layla if she wanted to hold it while she, you know, had her class, and she slid off the bench to. I guess look at the little stuffed animal and her shirt came up a little bit and I could see all over her um, stomach um, like bruising or red marks um, she something was definitely wrong definitely had injury to her stomach and what part of the stomach was it that you saw um, I th it was kind of lower abdomen area I think um, I'm, I'm not I'm not really really sure but I want to say like maybe around her belly button and below and when you saw that, that redness, um, what did you do? Um, I, I know that I gasped and I said, oh my gosh, you know, what happened to her? Um, Who were you asking that to? Jennifer. And I, I was very concerned and I think anybody would be. And I said, oh my gosh, you know, is she okay? What happened? And she proceeded to tell me that um, she had been abused terribly by the mother, that um, it went into detail about just very disturbing things that had been done that she even burned with really hot water um, and you know so that obviously something had happened but it yeah I don't know so I want to make sure I understand you she told you that um, Layla had been burned with hot water yes ma'am did she go into any other details about any other types of abuse that she had received um, she said that um, very disturbing. Um, she said that the mother, and, or I guess the mother and maybe the boyfriend, I can't really remember, because she did, anyway, she said that um, they would make Layla eat her poop when they changed her diaper, and if she wouldn't, she would pour boiling hot water on her, on her abdomen and on her um, private parts. Did she tell you anything else about the abuse that she believed Layla sustained by her bi biological parents? Um, I, I don't recall. I know that she said that she had a really hard time like changing her diapers and stuff like that after that and that was why I no, she didn't, I don't think that she said anything else about any other type of abuse. At any point did she tell you how long Layla had been in her care at that time? No, I don't think she ever told me how long she had her. During the time you were at Gym Tech, did you ever observe Layla um, doing a trial class or on the mats or participating in any way um, in the gymnastics that was going on? No. To your knowledge, did Layla ever participate in a trial class? Um, <clears throat> it seems like there was a, a time, I don't know if it was like right before we got to class one day, if it was prior to one of the classes, maybe a little few minutes before, 
or if it was on a different day, but I know that when we came into the gym for our class that there was, I remember Jennifer talking about how, uh, maybe talking with one of the teachers about Layla, try, they were trying to get her to do one of the classes and she couldn't do it. She was crying the whole time and she could not um, do the trial class. That She did not finish it or I, I don't know how long they were trying to do it, but she was upset and she couldn't do it. Did you ever talk to Jennifer about Layla trying to do the trial class? Um, I, I don't recall asking her any questions about it, but I, I know that there was a little bit of a discussion. It was almost as if she was kind of just just thinking out loud, maybe talking, saying that um, that maybe it was her leg bothering her, and maybe that's why she couldn't do it. And she mentioned several times that her, her leg being that it had bothered her, I guess, for a couple of days. That she knew that the girls were outside doing gymnastics at home in the front yard, and that Layla had fallen, and that she wondered if maybe she had hurt her leg there. Did you say anything to her about that um, statement that she made about Layla's leg already hurting? Uh, I believe so. I believe I asked her, you know, are you going to take her to urgent care or take her somewhere? Do you know if you made that statement to Ms. Yes. Rosenbaum? Yes, I do. Okay. And what was her response? Um, she said that... I can't remember verbatim, but she seemed very frustrated and did not want to do that. She made several comments about how she didn't like taking her to the doctor because they asked so many questions. That the, she always had to answer questions about the mom's abuse and that she didn't like going. Did you um, have any response to those statements? Um, no, other than just me saying, well, are you going to take her? I mean, but no. Did you observe Layla that day? Um, I mean, I noticed that she was there. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember anything specific, but she was there. And when was the next time that you saw Jennifer Rosenbaum and Layla after that discussion? Uh, I think it would have been in the next class, so like the following Monday. And what did you observe, if anything, about Layla in that next class? She did, in fact, have a cast on her leg. Did you ask or inquire about the cast on her leg? Um, I don't think so. I think I just thought, okay, that makes sense. Did Ms. Rosenbaum ever make mention to you about how she had hurt her leg to have to have a cast on her? No, not, not anything other than just that she fall, had fallen, or she thought maybe she just fell in the front yard, and that's when it happened. Or she, she did say that she did fall in the front yard, and she was assuming that's when she hurt her leg. Did she ever tell you that she had fallen um, at gymnastics? No. Did she ever tell you that she had fallen off of a beam at gym tech? No. Or a bar at gym tech? No. Had you ever observed Layla on a beam or a bar or a vault at gym tech? No. After you saw Layla with the cast on, did Millie continue to come to class? I think she did. I, I don't know how many times it was after that, but she did. And I think I asked you before about observing a bruise on Millie. Was that before Layla had the cast on or after that you saw that bruise to Millie's face? I, I really don't recall. I, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. After um, they came to the class and Layla had the cast on, did Millie continue to come to class? Well, I think... I don't remember how many times after that it was. Obviously, I would have seen her at a class if, if I saw Layla's cast. Um, I don't remember if it was many, if it was one time after that or if that was the last time. It doesn't seem like it was the last time, no. It would have, she would have had to have come to class again after that. Because I, I remember seeing Jennifer another time, and it was the last time I saw her. And tell me about that last time you saw her. Um, just that uh, she was there, and she had a friend with her, and we didn't really speak that time. Um, I just figured she you know, was with a friend, so, and then that was the last time I saw her. Okay. And you mentioned that um, the defendant, Jennifer Rosenbaum, indicated that 
Layla had been abused by her biological parents. Did she ever mention anything about abuse by prior foster parents? No. <clears throat> Your daughter, um, Macy, um, how long did she continue to take gymnastics? Um, for a few years after. Has she ever had any injuries as a result of taking gymnastics? No. no. Had, was she ever injured while she was at gym tech? No. At some point, did you learn about the death of Layla Daniel? I, I did, um, eventually. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know for a little while. I, I, I didn't know. In fact, I had asked one of the ladies there, you know, if what was going on. You know, I hadn't seen her in a while, and she didn't say anything, but I, eventually I found out. <clears throat> How did you find out? I, I saw it on TV. Okay. And what did you do when you saw it on the TV? Um, I, I was just very surprised, I guess, or very, um, you yeah, know, I think anybody would be shocked, but it, it <clears throat> very disturbing. Did you ever speak to the police about your inner, I guess, your interactions with the defendant, Jennifer Rosenbaum, yes. at Jim Tech? Yes. Do you recall when that was? Oh, um, it was a little while after. I don't remember. It might have been like a month or so maybe a little bit longer um, before I spoke with anyone. And how did you end up speaking with um, the police about your interactions with the defendant? Um, I felt like I had a moral responsibility to speak to someone because I felt like the things that we had discussed were not true and I, it, it was bothering me really bad. <laughs> And what did you do at that point? Um, I spoke with um, a detective. I went and met with him and gave a statement on the things that I did know. Okay. And were those the things that you shared with us today? Yes, ma'am. During that um, interaction with the detective, did um, he? Did you tell him about the injuries that you saw to Layla? Yes. Do you um, recognize Stacey's exhibit two, 213? Yes. And how were you able to recognize it? Um, it was a um, something that he had drawn or written in front of me and asked me um, to look at it. Okay. I'd ask the state's exhibit 213 be admitted into evidence. Admitted. And can you tell us what we're looking at here in state's exhibit 213? Um, it would have just been a, a, a sketch for us to both understand where I had described the seeing an injury to her abdomen area. Um, I think he wanted to know a better idea of exactly, so he drew a picture, and we agreed that was the same place. And so the arrow that's pointing that says injuries, was that drawn to indicate the area where you saw the injury? Yes, ma'am. And state's exhibit number 45, is that consistent with where you saw the injury on Layton? Yes, ma'am. You said you saw a scar on the child's abdomen. Isn't that true? I wasn't exactly sure what it was, to be honest. I, I, I saw redness. And Let it me see like. uh, if this would help refresh your recollection as to what you told the police. Mm -hmm. I've, I've read it. I know what it says. And what does it say? Let's see. I was able to see scars on her lower abdomen. Nothing about redness, right? Right. Nothing not not on that statement. Bruises, right? Anything about bruises or redness? Not on that paper, no. Now, you went to see the um, detective yourself. They didn't come to you, correct? Yes, that's correct. You volunteered that on January 22nd, 2016, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you were <laughs> friends with Layla's great aunt, isn't that correct? No, we're not friends. But you are Facebook friends, aren't you? I mean, I recognized her name from something, and I reached out to her and asked her if there was someone that I could speak to. I did not tell her any details. We never talked personal information. I just said, 
you know, I had some things I wanted to share with someone. Could she point me in the right direction? And I, I do not know her. I don't, we're not friends by any means. So um, you, you would deny that you're friends with her on Facebook where you comment on what she says and what you say to her? Um, since we've been friends on Facebook, we've friended each other. Um, on her personal Facebook page, if she posts a Bible scripture that I think is nice, I may comment and say, that's nice, but we've never had coffee in fact, you're a member of Justice for Layla, aren't you, of the website Justice for Layla? Um, I may be. I'm not really on social media very often. Let me see if this...